Plus another year's Christmas Eve, and most were asleep in those parts of the world engulfed in the night of the 24th of December. And a certain house located in a certain city at night, a certain intruder crept and sneaked inside that house. He was a fairly obese man of pale complexion and round chest and belly, donned in red and white. He was silent and stealthy. In his hands he carried an equally round red sack that rattled and jingled every step the man takes. This man was Santa, obviously. Santa looked at the Christmas tree in front of him and rummaged his red sack. He took out a gift box, green in color and wrapped in red ribbons. On the ribbon there was a card labeled for thread. Santa bent down to the best of his ability as if to place the gift box underneath the tree, but suddenly, Hey there! A voice cried. Santa turned around calmly, and he saw a young boy, most likely aged between six to nine. The young boy was holding an action figure of a brass robot, worn with age, for many years it had been in this boy's possession. The young boy stared blankly at a stout stranger in front of him, trying his hardest not to blink. But in the end, the temptation to blink was too potent, and the boy blinked. Santa was no longer by the Christmas tree. He was right in front of the boy. He bent down again and presented the boy with a gift box. Little Fred, I presume. Take it. The boy accepted the gift box, dropping his brass action figure in the process. He shook the box, wondering what it could be. All this time, Santa looked on with a gentle smile on his face. If anyone asks, it's from your daddy, he said, exiting the room. With Santa gone, Fred continued to fiddle with his latest gift, and then, Fred, who are you talking to just now? His mother called out, holding a flashlight in her hand. Santa Claus, he's kind of round. And so, rinse and repeat the same process. Santa eventually delivered gifts to all the children of the world. And finally, he went off to his final destination for the season, Site 19. The hallways of Site 19 are long and winding. Although Santa knew his way around well enough, he walked past the D-class and staff dormitories and the various cages that held many lethal SCP objects. Finally, Santa stopped in front of a cell door. The door opened on its own accord, as though it noticed Santa's presence. Inside is an empty room of concrete with a Faraday cage. Santa entered the room, and the door slammed shut. Outside that door, it remained a silent night with no further movement. Days later, Dr. Hughes of Site 19 was making his rounds to the anomalies under his supervision. He entered the cells of one of his assigned SCPs, a room with a Faraday cage inside. Santa was seated inside that cell. Good morning, SCP-055, said the doctor. And the big reveal is Santa Claus is actually SCP-055, junior researcher Hu Chi finish his narration of his tale to his eldest sister, Dr. Huang, and silently typed into a tablet and showed it to her younger brother. You do know there are several laps in logic to your story? Santa does not exist. It is impossible for a human to distribute gifts to about 1.9 billion children across the world within one cycle of the Earth's rotation. Your depiction of Site-19 is a complete mockery to the Foundation's largest facility, and I suspect you named the void bread intentionally. Furthermore, it is not advisable to make light of a Keter-class SCP, even if it were for jest. Sis, line up! It's the Christmas season, she insisted. Given the stress of our day jobs, a bit of humor and entertainment will keep us sane enough to fight another day. This breaks until the 26th, so let's save it a moment. Anne sighed at G's response, face palming herself as she relented to her brother's logic. She briefly glanced at an empty third chair in the dinner table. While typing in her tablet, 
G. Peach at the tablet. You sure Bao will be coming home for Christmas? Yes, he should have alighted by now. As G. spoke, An continued typing additional words. Even father couldn't convince him to come home. You seriously think your emails can get through that thick? The doorbell to the Hu residence rang. While Ang kept on typing, the two siblings removed themselves from the circular dinner table at once, going to the door. As the door opened, as the door opens, it revealed that the Hu siblings' youngest brother, known as Agent Hu Bao, at work. I told you he'll be back. She remarked. To which Aunt smiled. Merry Christmas, guys. Bao greeted. 